I got the shit kicked out of me in Wisconsin once. Forget it. Wisconsin. Ten wins, three losses a year ago. Not bad at all by Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson now is the head coach of Oregon State. When I first heard that, that really threw me for a loop. And then when I heard that Paul Crist became the head coach of uh, Wisconsin just after that, at first I was caught off guard as well because, you know, Crist in three years at, at Pittsburgh, it wasn't like he just, you know, took the ACC by storm. After all, Pittsburgh was 19-19 and under Chris's leadership in three seasons. However, he does know football. He was a former offensive coordinator at Wisconsin for seven years, so I can see why now Wisconsin hired him. Obviously, he's very close to the program, and also, too, for the fifth-year seniors, they have familiarity with Chris, especially uh, fifth-year senior QB Joe uh, Stobby. As a matter of fact, uh, Stobby, his very first year, had close ties to Chris, who, besides being the new head coach at Wisconsin, is also their quarterback's coach. So this should really, really help in the development of Joel Stobby. Stobby, keep in mind, um, is a QB that, yeah, he's been there a while, but you expect better than 53% completion percentage, which is what he had a year ago. Same time, he's got to complete the touchdown to interception ratio. Last year, 10 interceptions to only 9 TDs. In fact, um, against LSU and Ohio State, how did Wisconsin fare as far as throwing? 23 of 67 combined. Ouch. Bad right there. Less than 32% of their passes completed in the LSU loss, a game that, you know, as Dennis Green might say, will let them off the hook. And against Ohio State, where that game was over two minutes after the kickoff, it might as well have been. Ohio State, of course, winning 58 nothing with the third string QB in the Big Ten Championship game. But still, though, it was a solid year for Wisconsin, considering that they uh, hammered Nebraska with a 400-yard rushing performance from now-departed Melvin Gordon. We'll talk about his impact in a little bit. And also, too, uh, the fact that they beat Auburn in that bowl game at the end of the year. I think it was the Outback Bowl in what was one of the better bowl games of the year. But uh, Stobby will at least have Alex Erickson to throw to. Erickson, I think, is one of the more underrated, underappreciated receivers in the Big Ten. Now, you look at Erickson, he doesn't look all that size intimidating. You may not even think he's fast. But he does know how to run routes. He can catch passes, especially in traffic. Best part about Erickson's game I love, and he's truly a blue Clark player, he doesn't mind contact. He doesn't matter delivering hits and getting hit. If there's action, he's going to try to come down with the ball, no excuses. My kind of player, no excuses type player. Um, looking at the uh, running back situation, this is where you're going to miss Melvin Gordon. Now, you might say, you know, Corey, you know, Clement is a pretty good running back, and I have no doubt that he is. I think he'll be just fine, and don't be surprised if Clement becomes a part of the fraternity of great running backs at UW. You know, of course, Ron Dane won the Heisman there back in 99. And last season, you know, Gordon, 2,500-plus yards on the ground. That didn't happen too often. And had that 400-yard rushing game against the Huskers, which for one week until Samaj P. Ryan of my Sooners broke it the next week, had the record for most yards rushing in an NCAA Division I game. Gordon, to say he's going to be missed, yeah. It's not just the fact that he gained 2,500 yards on the ground, but also, too, nearly eight yards a carry. That's two yards away from a first down every time he touches the ball, in case you don't understand football 101. So there's no doubt that they're not going to be the same running the ball because Gordon's irreplaceable. But you've got Clement, and you also have a guy named Jordan Stevenson. Now, Stevenson had committed to Texas, and then he changed his mind and decided to give Camp Randall at Madison, Wisconsin, a try. So at least there's some depth there if Stevenson plays his true freshman year, and I believe he will. Offensive line, though, this is a concern. you got to replace three guys up front, um, but you do return um, – Dan Bolts, who could be all Big Ten center, and also offensive tackle in Tyler Marsh. Now, T.J. Watt, don't be surprised if you hear this game, this name called quite a bit at tied in. That name sounds familiar. His older brother, two-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, that's right, that guy, J.J. Watt from the Houston Texans, of course, who played at Wisconsin in the early 2010s. So you got T.J. Watt, who plays in offense, not defense, but uh, could be impactful from tied in. Defensively, Four of the seven front seven for the Badgers have departed. And we'll talk about the linebackers first because outside linebackers, I think they're going to be just fine with Vince uh, Beagle returning. Uh, Beagle last season had 56 tackles and complimenting him. On the outside will be Joe uh, Schobert, who had uh, 69 stops. But the inside linebackers, you're going to miss uh, Marcus and Michael Trotter. 
and also to uh, Derek uh, Landish. So Leon Jacobs, uh, inside linebacker, should have an opportunity to prove what he can do. But again, they're inexperienced at inside linebacker. And the thing about Wisconsin now, they proved over the years, um, especially in this decade, that they can lose great linebackers and replace them and develop you know, ones that are just as good. We'll see if that uh, trend continues. Defensive line, miss a couple of players, but you will have uh, Arthur Goldberg, who had 25 tackles, and that led um, all returning Wisconsin defensive linemen, including the Ents. So Goldberg will be important. And Jeremy Patterson, look, in a 3-4 defense, you know, your tackle or your nose guard better be able to occupy a lot of space and explode. Well, there's no question that uh, Patterson has the first part taken care of, 6'3", and 326 pounds. He's a load. We'll see how his explosiveness works, though, from the line of scrimmage. Secondary is probably the area I feel the most confident when it comes to the Badgers. Both corners are back, and both are solidified, especially a guy who I think will be in the NFL not too long from now. That is Sojourn Shelton. Shelton has played ever since his true freshman year. He got thrown right into the fire, and even his true freshman year did some really good things, and now here he is in year number three of his career for Wisconsin. And complimenting him would be Darius Hillary, 41 tackles and three sacks a year ago. Don't be surprised if Wisconsin continues to get quarterback sacks from the corners. Don't see that very often, but then again, these guys are that multiple, you know, that multidimensional. And at safety, Michael Caputo, you have him back, but you do lose the Gene Kid. Um, the other safety. So three quarters of your um, secondary returns, as well as the place kicker Raphael Gaglinoni. The schedule for Wisconsin, three out of the four non-conference games look like they're winnable ones. Miami of Ohio, Troy, and Hawaii, but they all proceed with, or precede in this case, with Alabama. Yeah, Crimson Tide, you've heard of them. They're pretty darn good. <laughs> and there's no doubt Wisconsin's going to be an underdog. Probably the one thing that the uh, Badgers will have going for them as this game will be played in Arlington, Texas, at a neutral side at Jerry's Stadium, is the fact that um, although Wisconsin looks a little raw on offense, so does Alabama. Okay, Alabama is going to be fairly um, new on offense in several positions. Defensively, though, this could very well be a low-scoring game. As much as Wisconsin has coming back with six starters, Alabama will have even more back in their defense is more established, so that's going to be a low-scoring game. Points will be at a premium in that one in early September. Big Ten schedule does not look that bad for Wisconsin, except for a couple of things. Number one, after hosting Iowa, you go to Nebraska for the second game. You like to see Nebraska a little bit later in the season, and usually you do, but you'll get them in mid-October. That game's in Lincoln and Nebraska. You know hasn't stopped thinking about the shellacking that they took from Melvin Gordon and the Badgers um, a year ago. And um, after playing Purdue and going to Illinois, uh, you then get a uh, matchup coming up later in the year. You get a bye week. The bye week, by the way, comes way too late. I think it comes in the second half of the season. That's the other bad thing about the Wisconsin schedule. Uh, you will host Rutgers, and you go to uh, Maryland. Hey, good news is you don't face Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, or the defending national champions and the team that beat you like a drum in the Big Ten title game. So at least the top four teams projected to be this year in the Big Ten East, you don't have to see. But you do close out the year with Northwestern, who did beat Wisconsin a year ago, and you wrap up at Minnesota, and the Golden Gophers are an improved team. Watch out for that game. It's at Minnesota. The Gophers are not pushovers anymore. Final thoughts defensively, I think Wisconsin should be good enough to remain in every game that they play, including the game against Alabama. Problem I have with Wisconsin, no. Stavi's going to have to get better, and at the same time, the offensive line in so many areas is starting from scratch. You don't have Melvin Gordon back, and I don't care who you have back there in the backfield. You're not going to find a better running back than him. Um, yeah, you know, Clement can play, and Stevenson has potential, but Gordon brought a whole lot to the mix. And in these two guys' defense, you know, and Clement and Stevenson, they're not, you know, running behind the same offensive line from a year ago. So offensively, I think they're going to digress, but defensively, I think they could be just as good, if not better. I'm going 9-3 and three for the Badgers, 6-2 and two in league play, and second in the Big Ten West Division. That's my look at Wisconsin. Catch you next time.